The RTVA-2 HIROC was a product of the United States' first effort to develop an intercontinental ballistic missile. All of these concepts were later used on the Atlas missile and the first two on the Viking. Also developed as part of MX-774 was the Azusa guidance system which was not used on the HIROC missile but did contribute to the Atlas missile as well as many other early guided missiles launched from Cape Canveral. The HIROC missiles were 31.5 feet long, had a fin span of 6 feet 10 inches, a diameter of 30 inches, an empty weight including payload of 1,205 pounds and a gross liftoff weight of 4,090 pounds. The missile's propulsion system consisted of an XLR-35RM1 composed of four thrust chambers, built by reaction motors, which produced 2,000 lbf of thrust each and could independently swivel up to 10 degrees on one axis. The gimballing motion was used to control the flight path of the missile, replacing the system of the V-2 missile that used moving fins placed within a fixed engine. The gimbal system adds complexity to the engine mounting but preserves more of the energy of the rocket exhaust during maneuvering. The HIROC missile used liquid oxygen as its oxidizer, and alcohol for its fuel. The HIROC missile did not have separate tanks for its fuel and oxidizer, which were instead contained in one tank separated by two bulkheads. The airframe of the rocket was supported by nitrogen gas pressure inside the tank, which could contain propellant or nitrogen gas when stored. Having gas pressure provide rigidity to the structure reduced the empty weight by requiring less metallic components for structural reinforcement, but made the missile fragile because it required continuous pressurization. The RTVA-2 HIROC had an airframe to propellant ratio three times better than the V-2. The nose cone, which contained instrumentation, would separate from the rocket booster. This made the rocket lighter as only the nose cone and its instruments and recording camera had to be able to survive recovery, rather than the entire rocket. The unique innovations of the HIROC missiles, such as the gimbaled thrust chambers, and the internal pressure-supported airframe, would go on to utilized in the Atlas rockets. Several changes were made in the Atlas, such as the aluminum used for the missile's airframe of the HIROC, was changed to stainless steel in the Atlas. The early Atlas utilized the MX-774 project developed a Zusa interferometry-based guidance system which served Cape Canaveral during the early space age. The engines of the Atlas missiles were also much more powerful, generating a total of 150,000 lbf of thrust, compared to the Hiroshi's total of 8,000 lbf thrust. In April 1946, Convera received a $1.9 million contract from the U.S. government under Air Material Command designation material, Experimental 774B to investigate the development of ballistic missiles. This was one of a large number of missile projects being studied by the U.S. Army at that time, which included both ballistic missiles and a variety of long-range cruise missiles as well. The original of MX-774B called for a missile that could deliver a 5,000 pounds payload 5,000 miles, and which had an accuracy that allowed it to deliver it to within 5,000 feet of the target. The MX-774B project was headed by Carol Bassart, who would go on to head the creation of the Atlas rockets. Although development of the specification MX-774B was inspired by the German V-2 the MX-774B introduced several significant innovations, such as an integrated propellant tank, swiveling engines, pressurized body, and detachable nose cone. As a result of drastic defense cuts in 1946 and for 1947 the USAAF's missile budget was cut in half from $29 to $13 million in what became known as the Black Christmas of 1946. The project was eventually cancelled in June 1947 as the Army concentrated their efforts on cruise missiles, which were more promising at that time. Convair arranged to use the remaining contract funding to launch three of the rockets, which were named RTVA-2 HIROC. The three tests took place on 13 July 1947, 27 September, and 2 December. These tests validated the concept of using gimbaled engines for propulsion and guidance. HIROC was flown from a pad 600 feet north the White Sands blockhouse. On the RTVA-2, a camera recorded the flight data displayed upon an instrument panel. During the test on 13 July, the HIROC reached a maximum height of 6,200 feet, but lost thrust after 12.6 seconds and hit the ground at 48.5 seconds, 415 feet from the launch pad. Due to a mistake in packing, the payload recovery parachute failed to open, a camera and a few other instruments survived, so the test was deemed a partial success. During the test on 27 September, the HIROC reached an altitude of 24 miles at 48 seconds and a maximum velocity of 2,350 feet per second. The parachute failed again, this time due to a battery problem. 
The high rock began to free fall before its oxygen tank exploded at 20,000 feet. During the test on the 2nd of December, the high rock reached a maximum height of 30 miles and reached a maximum velocity of 2,653 feet per second. The parachute failed to open yet again, this time due to the nose cone damaging it after being ejected, while the high rock was at an altitude of 121,000 feet and moving at a speed of 1,500 feet per second. The third high rock had its nose compartment extended 34 inches to allow more instrumentation. All three high rock missiles had partially failed due to premature closure of the liquid oxygen valve. The cause of the valve closing was traced to vibration of solenoids which caused pressure change in the hydrogen peroxide line which allowed nitrogen to vent from engine control lines with the resultant pressure drop closing the LOX valve. In late 1948, the Air Force proposed the continuation of the MX-774 program with an additional 15 missiles for high-altitude research but the proposal was refused by the Research and Development Board's Committee on Guided Missiles which decided that the more capable Navy Viking missile RTVN-12 was a superior high-altitude research vehicle. That core led to Convair proposing a missile to meet the Air Force request for Proposal MX-1593 which ultimately resulted in the Weapon System 107A better known as the B-65, SM-65 Atlas, America's first ICBM.